Good evening, Evangel Heights family, friends, and visitors. Thank you for your presence at this Christmas Eve service. To our visitors who are joining us this evening, I am Pastor Michelle Cobb, and on behalf of the Evangel Heights family and friends, I want to welcome you to our service. Let us pray. On this Christmas Eve, we think of the Advent candles of hope, peace, joy, and love. Candles that symbolize who you are and what you bring into our world and into the lives of all people, Lord Jesus Christ. As we gather tonight to worship you, we are reminded that you are the light of the world. Lord Jesus Christ, burn brightly in our lives tonight. Amen. found yourself driving on an unfamiliar road that had very few, if any, lights? Do you recall the feeling that came over you when you noticed in the near distance a cluster of lights that indicated that you were near a more populated area of stores, industries, or homes? That feeling that you experienced I would suggest when that was not only a feeling of relief, but also of hope. It is amazing how lights can stir up hope in the midst of dark places and experiences, even those experiences of despair, discouragement, and hopelessness. 
The meditation for this evening is titled Light. And the scripture readings are from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 through 7, and the gospel according to St. Luke chapter 2, selected verses. Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 through 7, read, the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign over David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. And from the selected verses of the gospel according to St. Luke chapter two. In those days, Caesar, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. The prophet Isaiah in Isaiah chapter nine, verses two through seven describes a land of darkness. What has caused the darkness? The darkness is caused by the Assyrian conquest of the Northern kingdom due to the disobedience to God by the inhabitants of the Northern kingdom, God's people. This conquest led to exile. This darkness is not focused on individuals and their particular sin. This darkness is focused on a more corporate kind of sin, a social sin, a corrupt social infrastructure. Against this background, the prophet speaks of the dawning of light. In this light, people are celebrating as if they have won the battle. Their yoke is thrown off and the oppressive rod is broken. The instruments of war are being thrown into the fire. Isaiah is envisioning the future. And this text points to signs of this future, even in the midst of darkness. The Isaiah prophecy portrays a perfect ruler whose kingdom will last forever, whose reign will be marked by endless peace, by justice, and by righteousness. 
Notice the titles given to this perfect ruler, wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. At the core of Isaiah's prophecy is the reason for rejoicing, the birth of the Messiah, which ushers in God's coming kingdom. The story recorded in Luke chapter, few, chapter two is viewed against the backdrop of the reign of Caesar Augustus. Caesar Augustus was praised as the great king of peace. This gospel announces the arrival of the true king of peace, Jesus the Christ. Jesus, the Messiah. Jesus Christ brings a peace that no earthly king will ever achieve. In the midst of our brokenness and pain, the birth of Jesus Christ reminds us that Jesus Christ is the true king of peace. Notice that this good news is shared first with those who may be considered the outcasts of society, the shepherds, dirty, smelly, living out in the fields. This was the group who the angel sought out to share the good news that the new king born has brought peace to all persons, especially to the poor. Yes, this Jesus Christ is the fulfillment of hope and the light of a world that needs a prince of peace. On this Christmas Eve, may we pause and invite the prince of peace, Jesus Christ, to reign in our lives. Amen.
Receive now the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>